Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring less insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this week's episode, we're joined by Michael Gosling, Head of Sheep in Chagas, to discuss external parasite control in sheep. Michael starts by describing how plunge dipping was common practice on many farms and why it now needs to be considered again for external parasite control, particularly to replace the use of injectable macrocyclic lactone products for whole flock treatments. We discuss best practice when it comes to dipping, with Michael emphasising how the duration sheep are dipped for has a big impact on its efficacy. He also highlights the need to replenish the dip concentration as active as removed during the dipping process. Michael discusses the option of using mobile plunge dipping contractors to provide that service or considering incorporating dip tubs into new handling units or existing ones. We move on to discuss dip disposal, why it's vital that this is done in a timely and safe manner. And we finish up with Michael encouraging farmers to consider dipping once again as a means of controlling external parasites. We start off, however, with Michael highlighting how dipping was common practice on farms during the 80s and 90s and why farmers moved away from that process. If we go back to the kind of 80s um, and, and 90s, probably the early 90s, you know, m- most sheep farmers were dipping their sheep and dipping them every year and most sheep farms had a dipping tank or had access to a dipping tank somewhere in the locality and i suppose in the in the 1980s we had the uh, the arrival of the first of the ivermectin classes the macrocyclic lactone injectables um, and they also controlled scab so that gave people an opportunity to use injectables to control scab we saw we still had blowfly and various other external parasites and was over the years then along came the, the various different porons which control the likes of biting lice and ticks and and blowfly and really i suppose over the last 30 30 40 years we've seen a big swing away from plunge dipping to people using lots of alternatives because they're much easier um on both man and beast it's much quicker to to fill a batch of, a, a race full of sheep and inject them all or put a pour on on then to 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 spend you know half a day dipping sheep. Uh, I suppose that's that's the historical thing about it, Kieran. Whether whether it has been with the benefit of the hindsight, the right move or not is is something I suppose which is up for debate. And like just speaking about the right move, Michael. I suppose at this time of the year, you know things like scab come more prevalent. We're slowly moving out of blowfly season. I suppose that Michael, that that's what injectable ivermectin really have taken a hold as a routine control measure on farms. Yeah, look at I think I um you know the the routine use of of injectable ivermectins and we frequently come across flocks which would say that they they give the sheep an injection every year the flock you know uh, for scab um maybe even in flocks that would be pretty closed and wouldn't have contact with other sheep um I suppose the challenge with that really is that we're we're selecting very very heavily for resistant internal parasites so the stomach worms. And that's the problem, and that's why we're advocating that that's actually a bad practice. This idea of bringing in all your sheep and injecting them on the one day with a, an injectable macrocyclic lactone for scab control is a really bad idea um, from an internal parasite, from a stomach worm um, point of view, because you're from that point on, you know, the only eggs that are coming out of those sheep are resistant worm eggs to that particular wormer. Um, so while people might not be thinking about worming the, the sheep when they're doing that. They actually are, and that's the problem, and that's why we're not advocating that um, as a sustainable practice going forward. You're you're inadvertently giving a warmer. You're destroying some of that fusion and it's challenging. I suppose just the caveat that to have Mike like as one of the other challenges probably with dipping is we tend to think about making up a big batch to do a large number of animals, where individual animals, be it a ram or a small number of placements, go onto the farm. That's possibly an exception in that rule, is it? Yeah, so absolutely. Look at I think um, when we're talking about about dipping, we're really talking about you know dipping the entire flock on the one day. Um, if somebody is going out to buy in some sheep, uh, you know somebody going out to buy a ram, or maybe buy a small number of replacement females, and they're coming onto a farm at a time when it's not conducive to dipping the entire flock, then for in that situation, using an injectable macrocyclic lactone to control the scab or prevent the introduction of scab into that flock 
is a good policy as part of the biosecurity protocol. And from an from a, an anti-mintic resistance point of view, it's it's probably not that big a deal because we're advocating going in with a with a another fourth or fifth generation warmer, which will eliminate any resistant parasites, hopefully, in that system. So we're we're getting rid of the parasites, um, and we're only injecting a, a small number of sheep. So it's not the same as going and injecting the entire flock, and from that point on, everything coming out of all the sheep on the farm is only a resistant parasite um, for a period of time. In this case, it's only a small number of animals, so we don't have that same selection pressure. So that's fine. Um, and we would advocate that that is an appropriate use of, of, of those injectable microcyclic lactones. But as you indicated, like for whole flock treatments going forward, we need to move back more towards using plunge dipping. Just maybe as a prelude to Michael, like in terms of external parasite control, it pretty much ticks all the boxes when done correctly. Yep. So um, plunge, proper plunge dipping, I suppose, Kieran, is, is the term we need to use, is, is really effective at controlling virtually all of the, the external parasites. So if we use a cypermetrin-based plunge dip, um, it controls everything from ticks to scab to biting lice to blowfly control. If we're using an organophosphate, um, that isn't licensed for the control of, of ticks, but it certainly wipes out everything else. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a really good way of treating sheep for external parasites without selecting for you know resistance to to the internal parasites that, that are inside them. And just when you mentioned proper dipping, I better get you to just go through a few of the aspects of it because its success does depend on it being done correctly. What are the number of key criteria we need to look at, Michael, when we're talking about proper dipping? Yeah, so Kieran, look, we often hear people saying that, oh, you know, the dips nowadays are no good and, and you know, the dips don't last as long and I dip cheap and we had fly strike, you know, two weeks later or two and a half weeks later. And and I suppose, that, look, at the re there's a lot of research done on, on sheep dipping and all of that research really shows that the length of time that the sheep are in the bath, the concentration of the active ingredient in the bath, and all of those things are really, really important when it comes to dipping and to the success of the dipping in terms of one, killing the parasites that are on the sheep and two, giving you some period of, of, of cover after the sheep have been dipped. So I suppose in terms of, of proper dipping, first of all, we want to say that dipping is dipping. It's what we call plunge dipping. The sheep are being dipped and plunged into a bath which, which contains that solution as opposed to being sprayed with some sort of a solution. Um, so, I mean, the couple of things that people need to, to look out for are, first of all, you start with a clean dipping tank. So clean out the tank, um, clean tank, clean water. Um, then the operator knowing the size of the tank, so how, how many gallons or liters it holds, follows the manufacturer's reflect, uh, recommendations in terms of making up the initial dip solution and do, does that wearing all the, 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 the protective equipment, PPE that they need in terms of masks and face shield and aprons and gloves and things like that. So once we have the, the, the dip concentration made up, uh, our fresh solution, we need to look for a look at our sheep. So our sheep really should be rested, um, brought in, uh, rested and fasted. So brought in, you know, four or five hours before the dipping starts and they need to be dry dry so that they can absorb the, the dip solution and into their fleece. Um, so we, we, we present our sheep dry um, and fasted uh, and rested as well as they're not out of breath or after being run up and, 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 and panting like mad inside the dipping tank. And then we, we put each sheep into the dipping tank. And when the sheep are in the tank, we need to make sure that they are fully submerged so that they have their head um, pushed under the, the solution twice, um, just short push them under, leave them back up straight away again to get their breath and, and that that happens twice. And, and this is where the important thing then really comes into play. The minimum amount of time, now for a lot of people, this has become the target. The minimum amount of time that the sheep should be in the dipping tank is 60 seconds. So, um, you know, the longer they are in the dipping tank, the longer the residual activity of that dip. And, and the reason for that is that as the sheep are paddling around inside the tank, tank, the active ingredient, the dip that's in that solution 
is absorbed into the fleece and into the fibers. And the longer they're in, the more of that active ingredient gets, gets drawn into the, 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 the grease and the lanolin in the fleece and is held there. So there's some experimental work that was done in this in the 80s that showed that you know, if sheep were left in the tank long enough, that they could actually get up to 16 weeks protection from blowfly strike control. Um, now, the challenge, I suppose, is very often when people are dipping, you have a lot of sheep to get through, and you're, you're trying to get through them as quickly as possible. So the, the really, I suppose, the important thing is that people see these 60 seconds as a minimum uh, time requirement rather than the target. Um, so that's the first point, I suppose, uh, sheep inside the tank for 60 seconds. The next thing then is, I suppose, as the sheep are, are leaving the tank, um, the, the dip is flowing off them and flowing back into the tank. But really what's happened is what's, what's coming back into the tank off of those sheep is water with less dip concentration in it because the actual active ingredient in the dip is, is stuck inside the fleece. It's stuck on, on, on the wool fibers. So we need to then make sure that we, we regularly replenish um, the dip solution. And for most of the dip solutions, which are standard kind of two to 300 gallon tank, um, you're doing that after every 36 sheep. So after every 36 sheep go out of the tank, regardless of what the water level is in the tank, we need to top up with dip concentrate. And that's to take account of the actual active ingredient that's gone out on the fleece. And that's an important one, Michael, like you've alluded to it there. Although the water is running back into the tank, the actual solution, and it has to do this, is bound to the sheep going out to the field. So the concentration is declining continually. Absolutely. So there, there, there's two things we'll say that affect the concentration of the dip and the efficacy of it. So one is the amount of sheep that have gone through it um, and the, 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 the amount of the active ingredient, the organophosphate or the cypermetrin that's gone out on the fleece, uh, bound to the fleece. And the second thing is the soiling. So the soiling of the dip solution reduces the efficacy of it. Um, and, and, and that's why we're, we're replenishing. So when we start with a new dipping tank full with fresh, clean water, and we put, the, put in the right amount of concentrate, we actually have a very high level of the, of the active inside in that. And then once we start putting in sheep, that starts dropping, dropping, dropping after every sheep, it drops a little bit. And then we top it up, bring it up again, you know, and then it starts dropping again straight away. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep that solution uh, strength above the, the, the minimum line for getting effective dipping to take place within that 60 second um, time, time frame. And just in that, like for larger flocks, Michael, there may be need to re completely reconstitute that tank, I assume. Yeah, so because I suppose the dip doesn't actually have an antibacterial uh, agent in it. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't kill the bugs and stuff. And if you dip a lot of sheep on a warm day and and after a period of time, if you were, not, not recommended, but if you were to put your hand into the dip tank, the dip would actually be warm um, from the, you know, it, it absorbs body temperature from the sheep. Um, and, and, that, and there's a lot of feces and, and grease and dirt inside in that tank. So it's, a, it's an ideal breeding ground for bacteria. Um, it's warm. Uh, there's a lot of, of, of food in there in terms of dirt and, and, and feces. And there's lots of bacteria that have come in with the dirt. And, and, and with the feces. So it's a real breeding ground for bacteria. And that's why we say, you know, that once you have dipped, um, it's, it's a half a, half a gallon um, per sheep. So if we've, for argument's sake, if we've got a 200 gallon tank, that's enough water inside one mix of that to do 400 sheep. Obviously we have to top it up after every 36 sheep, but once we have 400 sheep dipped, that solution is now so dirty that if we, top it up, you know, there's a high risk that we're going to get, you know, infection in the animals, that it's, it's not going to be as effective because there's such a load of, of organic matter inside there. Um, and the, the, the answer in that situation is that you basically bring in your slurry tanker, you suck out the solution, and you start with a fresh solution. So if you had 800 sheep to dip in that situation, um, you'd be filling your tank um, from scratch twice. You'd be doing it at the start, and you, you'd be coming in after 400 sheep sucking it out and and going with it with it with a new new fill and doing the second uh, 400 batch then at that stage so that's very important it's a half a gallon or about two and a half liters two and a quarter liters per sheep um once that many sheep have gone through you, know, and you have a point there i want to come back to in a moment but it, it also raised another issue 
Just in terms of the order of which sheep should be put through, because you have issues like post dip and nameless, you touched on a little bit of that. Is there any particular order we should dip a uh, breeding flock in? So I, I suppose, firstly, the aim is to avoid post dipping lameness. So post dipping lameness is basically where we get a bacterial infection, which, which affects the sheep because the tank is dirty. The, the, the dip wash is, is so dirty, has such a high bacterial load in it, that when the sheep are immersed and swimming around inside that they become infected. And we call it post dipping lameness um, because generally what happens is the joints will swell up and you get that infection in the joints. Um, and it's, it's really, you need to talk to your vet at that stage and to, to talk about the treatment for those sheep. The problem I suppose with that, Kieran, is, is um, if that happened, and in particularly if it happened in a breeding flock, and if it happened to your rams, your breeding rams, they would be infertile for a period of six to seven weeks after dipping, after that post-dipping lameness, because the, the post-dipping lameness is, is an infection, it increases the body temperature, and it would basically make them infertile. So really, when we're dipping, um, we want to try and avoid that in the first place by, by doing things correctly and having a clean tank and clean wash and, and, and replacing it. But you would always recommend that the rams would be dipped first in the breeding flock, particularly here if we were close to breeding time. Because, you know, if you, if you dip them at the end, obviously the dip wash is much, much dirtier. The risk of post-dipping lameness is, is somewhat higher. And for, for your ram flock to, be called, to succumb to post-dipping lameness would be an Armageddon type situation. For a sheep farmer because he'd basically have you know no rams to tip the oars with um you know and they would be infertile for six to seven weeks so really i suppose if we're dipping we want to you know ideally be six or seven weeks out from the breeding season um but look at that's not a an absolute requirement if dipping is done correctly it can be done um safely uh closer to that but generally i suppose we'd be saying you know, two to three weeks before the 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 the, the breeding season probably would be where you know, as close as you'd be going. You wouldn't want to be doing an awful lot of handling and dipping and messing around with sheep right up at the, at the start of the breeding season. No, you like you like them a bit more settling. Well, you, you raised the point there earlier about dip disposal and changing over dip. It can be quite problematic if it contaminates a water stream. What's the best practice for dip disposal? Yeah, so dips are dips are really good at killing, um, you know, bugs and mites and things like that. And 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 you know, we have lots of um, aquatic uh, invertebrates that live in the streams and the rivers, and they're generally a sign of of the river health. Now, if a little bit of dip gets into a, a stream or a river, it absolutely wipes it out, you know, for for long periods of time because they're very very effective um, at at killing these things. So it's absolutely essential that people make sure that that dips do not get into water courses. So, I mean, we're talking about, you know, even the sheep after they've been dipped, they need to go out into a field where there is no access to a drain or a dike or a river or a stream, any water course. You know, so even, you know, when you're dipping your sheep, plan for what field you're letting them into um, and they go to that sheep. You know, even sometimes people truck sheep on the road after dipping, you know, um, you know, that's high risk, like, because you're, you're, you're going to be loading them on a trailer. The dip is going to be flowing out of the trailer. Um, as you're driving up, you know, over hills and bumps and hollows, and there's going to be dikes along the side of roads and streams that potentially that water could go into and could destroy the stream for, for you know, a kilometre or two down the stream. So we want to avoid that. Um, so first of all, the sheep out into a field that has no access to water course, don't be trucking them on the road. Um, uh, after dipping, you know, if you had to do that, make sure that you have a slurry tank or a, a slurry tank on the, the trailer or the truck that's doing that, that's absorbing any of the stuff that's coming off them and try to have them as dry as possible going on to that. Um, the second thing then is, I suppose, the dip disposal and dip disposal is very important as well. So, you know, often at the end of the day, dipping, we're very tired, you know, a lot of sheep to sort out and you'd say, oh, look, I leave the tank there for the night and we'll sort it out. Uh, not a great idea, really, really bad idea to be honest with you, because if it rains or anything like that, that tank will overflow going to the stream. Um, so when you're finished dipping, bring in your slurry tanker, suck up the dip um, out of the out of the the, the dipping tank, um, and then you dilute that uh, three parts water or slurry to one part dip. So you know if you had a 400 um, gallon dipping tub, uh, you'd be arriving with 1200 gallons of water or slurry in the tanker and suck up the remaining 400 out of the the tank uh, the dipping tank, and then land spread that at about. 1700 um, gallons per acre, you know. Uh, and again, same story with that, Kieran. 
you'd be going into a field that um, doesn't have a water course or a drain or anything nearby. Um, if the weather was adverse, if we were expecting rain, I, I really we shouldn't be dipping sheep if there's rain forecast. But if if let's say things changed and you you found yourself in that unfortunate situation, then you wouldn't be land spreading it. You'd be putting it into your slurry your, your slurry tank and leaving it there uh, until there's a more suitable time to spread it. You know, it's something that care has to be taken with. But look, I suppose, Mike, if we just go back to the start and point with this, it is a very effective way of controlling it. I suppose one of the challenges at farm level now is that some of them old dipping tank units are no longer suitable and we wouldn't recommend their usage. There is mobile dippers available that can potentially provide an alternative for dipping. So look at, I mean, if you have your own dipping tank on the farm, obviously there's there's a benefit to that and it's there when you need it. Um, if you have a tank that isn't sealed or is, is damaged or old, then basically that's that's not a good idea. We, we can't have tanks now where the stuff is, 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 is leaking out through them or tanks that have uh, or pipes that are flowing into various different soap pits or things like that can't be used. Um, so either you have a, a you know, good leak proof tank, dipping tank on your farm. And I think anyone who was, who was investing in a handling unit and building a, a sheep handling unit should would strongly advocate, you know, considering putting in a dipping tank as part of that. Um, if, you, if you're not in that situation that you don't have one, then there are, uh, you know, a growing number of people who have mobile plunge dipping units. Now, mobile plunge dipping. So these are mobile units with a dipping tank in them where the sheep are dipped inside in a tank of water as opposed to spray dipping, um, you know, which we're not advocating. Um, so, you know, and, and same thing applies again here. here. Look at the important, the three important things really for, for dipping to work is, you know, you start with a clean tank and the correct um, concentration. You, you leave the sheep in for at least 60 seconds, not a target of 60 seconds, but at least 60 seconds. So, you know, if they're in for a minute and a half or two minutes, great, better job. Um, but at least 60 seconds. And number three, that you replenish um, the dip after every whatever number of sheep, you know, for most uh, products and most the standard type dipping tanks, it's probably around 36. But, you know, bigger tanks will vary, smaller tanks will vary. Some of the dips have different um, recommendations. So you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Um, and those are the three things to get the dipping to work right. And I suppose then look at there are other issues in terms of your personal protection. And those are also very important. Um, and then there is the disposal of the dip and preventing any bit of dip um, getting into a water course um, because of the, the environmental implications that that has. So th those are really, I suppose, the five kind of important points that people need to take on board, Karen. But dipping is, is, is a good way of controlling external parasites and people need to, to, to start looking at dipping again, in particular, where people are relying on injectable macrocyclic lactones for the control of sheep scab. That is not a sustainable solution going forward on a flock basis. Fine for a few individual sheep that are being bought in, but not on a flock basis. No longer sustainable, really, to be honest with you. Oh, some very important things that are particularly at the moment and at the current time we are at. Michael, as always, good to have you on. Thanks, Kier. Okay, we're going to finish up at this point. Again, as Michael has highlighted, plunge dipping is a very effective means of external parasite control in sheep and should strongly be considered to replace the broad use of injectable microstatic lactones on Group 3 ML products and avoid putting further pressure on the development of antenna maker resistance on our farms. There are a number of mobile contractors providing this service around the country that have a mobile plunge dippers that can be considered if you don't have the facilities yourself or potentially, as Michael has indicated, is something to consider as part of your handling unit. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates from our sheep program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chalga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and listen in to any of our episodes.